from the point of view of somebody that cares deeply about the uh, inherent dangers of climate change, and I think it's really important to bring it back to the human level, and ultimately if we uh, trigger runaway climate change and push global warming beyond two degrees, we don't really know where it's going to go. It could spiral out of control, and that's going to ultimately impact the lives of a lot of people and cause a great deal of suffering. So given that we're kind of playing with fire, uh, I would say that it could always be more ambitious until we get to zero. That said, you have to work with what you can work with, you have to be pragmatic, and I think that it's, um, it's good enough for now, and it's the kind of signal that can then, and this is partly what we're working on, give investors the confidence that at least something is coming, there is a price that will be on the horizon, and that may be well enough to shift their investments now so that they can get ahead of the curve. And that could well be, in my opinion, what will actually trigger a change in the wider economy. So we take the largest companies in the world according to their market size, and then we rank them according to their greenhouse gas emissions intensity. So in other words, we're normalizing their emissions for the company size so you can compare companies of different sizes. Um, and the idea there is to create a ranking system where each and every company has a dynamic incentive to be constantly improving, and that means lowering its emissions. And then what we do is we link that to a series of stock market indexes, just like the FTSE 100 or the S&P 500, where we're shifting capital away from the high carbon companies towards the low carbon companies. That's the essence of what ET index is.